What's up guys, Dr. Jess Mason here, and the plan was to show you how to make your own mucosal atomizer device. Very exciting, we were hoping to find a method that worked as well as the commercially available products. There are some other videos out there that show Waves how to do this using a nebulizer chamber. We tried a whole bunch, as you can see, and it turns out, doesn't work as well as I was hoping it would. Let me show you why. So if you take a nebulizer chamber and then you connect it to either oxygen tubing or in this case, suction tubing we found fit a little bit nicer. So we'll go ahead and place that there. And then you connect this end to oxygen. Thank you, Adam. Just like you would if you were neb nebulizing something. So let's turn this on and take a closer look at what actually happens. So as you can see, there's drops coming out of the tip of the tube. Now there is a fine atomized mist that's coming out, but it's a lot finer than the commercially available products. It's running a lot slower. Hope you don't need that volume that's just being wasted onto the floor. And it's gonna take a long time before the volume in the chamber actually gets administered. Hold on to that for me, Adam. Thanks. So. We tried all of these different devices and we just really couldn't get a good effect. We couldn't get that nice, even spray. It was all pretty much this atomized mist. And I mean, that's gonna work okay if you're just trying to do topical anesthetic of the nasopharynx, maybe for a scope, for example. But this is not gonna work well if you need precise dosing or if you have an uncooperative patient or if you need the medication administered rapidly. And that right there, that takes out most of the uses of intranasal medications. So if you think of something that you think is better than these methods, we want to know. Thanks for watching.